Hey, this, you is my, me now. this is my shock face. It is Taco Tuesday. You got me, Maddie. I'm nope. up there. Hey, Todd, you see any cool comments, then bring them up. Wow, we'll Just, all right, uh, and we are live on Instagram. I don't see Looking you yet, Chase. Pretty sweet ride. Steve, come on, you gotta find me. You're I'm out there. Oh, wait, hold on. Ah, we are live on Instagram. I what's up, Stevie? We got a crowd going on today. What's going, what's happening? Today we're gonna be talking about alignments on your UTV, whether it be front end or rear end, correct? Everybody loves a rear end, typically. I do love a rear end alignment. And we do more rear ends than we do fronts around here. <laughs> that I'm is true, uh, especially Chase. So, we need to come over here to Just Justin and talk Just about alignment. Justin. Just Justin. This is my last show again. <laughs> Steve, I'm glad you're back, man. I know you're out working in the dunes, but it wasn't the same with it without you here or with you here. It just really wasn't. Everybody's requesting you too. Oh really? Oh, I feel the love. Like we're mi you we're midway, midway through the last feed on how to actually get free money, and you would think everybody would be into that, but no, they wanted <laughs> they you. They just wanted me. <laughs> oh man, that makes me feel good. Thank Surprising, you. Surprising. I'm back. Surprising. I'm back. <clears throat> there it is. Love coming in already. I bet. Awesome. But um, Chase, I'm proud of you. Do you know why? Uh, it's got to be because uh, I was on time for today's feed. Uh, duh. And I was not. I was actually late Ooh. today. Yeah, you pulled a chase, honestly. <laughs> we were on chase time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and now you're even taking my job. But and? Now, That's and, not hard. And, yeah, and look, I got two shirts on just for Steve. <laughs> All the way through. So that we do not have any pit action. I think, no, I think I, you actually had it, but you just threw the shirt on. I, so I, at the end of this feed, we're going to look back at you, and I bet you they're soaked. He's sweating more right now just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I did run out of deodorant today, so if I don't get some after work today, then we're screwed for Thursday. So we'll see. Uh, at least it's a we'll, race against time. <laughs> it's bad. That would be like a chemical outbreak around here, I think. If we let him go. Back to alignments. Uh, alignments are usually boring. Actually, most of the stuff that we talk about technically around here is pretty boring, and I'm surprised you guys tune in and... and, and look at some of the uh, or listen to some of the things that we talk about but um, we have had a lot of people ask us about alignments the reason is that on a UTV you know one of the most popular upgrades is going to be uh, rear radius rods which we sell a lot of we install a lot of and we've got a lot of guys around here that do it every single day that can give you some good advice on how to do that um, quickly uh, even if you don't watch our videos which is about I don't know 50% of our customers who get their stuff in the mail and they open the box, go right past everything that says look at our videos for instruction because they're so excited to put it on, slam it on there and it's not aligned. Um, there's ways you can actually uh, cheat the system of aligning it quickly so that it's not going to destroy tires, it's not going to uh, drive horrible. Uh, most of the time there's not very much adjustment in these at all, uh, so you don't have an option. But when it comes to alignments, there are a few things that are standard practice on every vehicle, doesn't matter if it's UTV or not. You know, caster, camber, toe, and square. I'll get to square a little bit, and that's just checking to make sure that the car is square. But caster, here is what caster actually is. If you are looking at the front of the car, arms, chassis, hey look at that roll cage, just like a race car or something. Look at that, Chase. I might be your new graphic guy. That is like... It looks a little bent. Cat. That looks, uh, I don't know, fat that tire for a UTV right hey, there. That looks Justin, like my the car. frame looks bent like... <laughs> this <laughs> looks like Matt's car. You beat me to it. <laughs> Son of Sorry, Matt. <laughs> but, uh, caster is not from the front. This is going to be camber. This is same car. If it was Matt's, then it might look like this. <laughs> okay, a little bow, a bow in the cage maybe. And uh, front, it's more of a sand car, I think, but upper arm. Just a lot arm. of people are saying it looks like a speed UTV. What? <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Uh. So this is going to be the camber side of things. I'm drawing the arm on this car so you can see roughly how we're going to adjust it. But that would be a tire, spindle upper arm and lower arm on this frame. So caster. Caster is 
if looking at the side of the vehicle, straight at the tire, or driving this way, tire right here, on that tire, inside that tire, is the upright or spindle, whatever you guys want to call it. Everybody's got their own term for it. But the upper control arm is attached to the top, lower control arm is attached to the bottom. How that spindle or upright is leaned to the rear or leaned to the front is going to be caster. Going to the front is negative caster. Going to the rear is positive caster. What's correct? Well, most UTVs are are, mar are aligned. You guys got something funny, go ahead and just say it. Mike Dove just wanted to let you, Justin, <laughs> don't quit your day job and yeah. give up on your dreams of an artist. No, nope, no, nope, I let other people do that. I just come in and ruin it. Jacob Carver's got a pretty good point. What do you got, Jake? Uh, Jake Carver says, how does anyone know what a speed UTV looks like? They are imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, unicorns and rainbows. So, sorry, Robbie, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so spindle and upright. Uh, lean that spindle back at the top. That's going to be positive. So what happens is the farther that you lean that spindle back by adjusting the upper arm to the rear, if it is adjustable, factory is not, the farther you lean that back, the straighter that the car is going to want to drive if you let go of the wheel. It's almost like having power steering holding you dead straight. So a, a car with a lot of positive on the spindle you can let go of the wheel, it's going to go straight through the bumps, it's not going to want to turn. A car with less positive, and ne I would say not negative, but less positive, somewhere in the three to two, one to three degree range, is going to want to turn a lot easier and not go perfectly straight. So there's a happy medium because you want the car to go straight, but you also don't want to have a car with a ton of positive caster into it which drives great and straight, but when you turn, it loads up and won't, doesn't, it fights you. It doesn't want to turn to the corner. It um, has like, the feeling like your power steering isn't working. So you don't want that. You don't want to have too little. You have the car dart around when you're in a straightaway at 80 miles an hour. So somewhere in, the, in there is going to be happy medium. We, on our race car, run the car between 2 and 5 degrees positive. Now, 2 would be like a short course or something you're going to be turning a lot, uh, something that's not super high speed. Uh, four to five degrees would be something that's uh, 80, 90 mile an hour straightaways, a lot of them, uh, graded roads, or even high speed whoops. Uh, you're going to want the thing to track perfectly straight through. Um, in our race car, we can pretty much let go of the steering wheel at 80 miles an hour through two foot whoops, and it's going to track perfectly straight. Um, when you come hit the brakes and come into a corner, it'll drive perfectly into the corner and won't fight you. So that would be my suggestion on a UTV somewhere between. I, I narrow it down two to four degrees in that range. Did you have something, Steve? Uh, Justin, there's a couple questions. Do stock cars mm -hmm. come with caster, positive or negative? No. So let me go back before I'm kind of I was I got off on too much of a tangent with this stuff. Caster camber toe. These adjustments on a UTV typically bone stock. You do not have caster and camber. There is no adjustment in the front control arms for that. In tow, everything's got a tow adjustment, and that is in your tie rod. Now, you also have adjustment in the back when it comes to aftermarket radius rods, but typically bone stock coming from the factory rear radius rods do not have any adjustment for camber or toe. Chase um, likes a good toe adjustment. I like oh, a little toe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a we know. Toe? He likes a lot of toe. <laughs> uh, his favorite, I think his favorite's camel. Camel, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he talks about it all the time as much as he, ha I don't know, there's a bunch of things that I don't want to talk about with Chase yeah. having to talk about. It. But right here in the toe, oh, there it is. Gave you a good one. Um, so you don't have very much adjustment in the, in the car UTV factory. You have toe in the front and that's about it. But everybody buys aftermarket radius rods, which means in a Polaris, you're gonna have a camber adjustment. We'll get into camber. In the front, if you buy aftermarket uh, A-arms, say long travel kit, a lot of them are adjustable with uh, rod ends on the inside. So, or a forward mounted longer uh, wheelbase uh, set of arms like a, a Super ATV or a ton of others have adjustments so you can align the car. That's the stuff that we're talking about here. So factory, you don't have these two adjustments. That would be a no and a no. And you certainly don't have anything you can do about square. Factory, you have a toe adjustment. But back to caster. So caster is leaning the spindle backwards. Uh, the farther back you go, the straighter it goes. The farther forward you, you lean it, the quicker it's gonna wanna turn for you or enter a corner. Camber, camber is this first drawing I just did. Camber is leaning the tire in or out, looking at the front of the car. So negative camber would be if this tire is aligned to leaning on the top. 
You see a lot of cars with that. Maybe they wanted it, maybe they didn't. Could be just what they ended up with. But camber is something that's definitely adjustable in most aftermarket A-arms. It is something that's adjustable certainly in every aftermarket, well, almost every aftermarket rear radius rod kit. So camber is something you want to play with. Now, if you align the car to have the tires perfectly straight up and down, which would be zero camber, negative is leaning the tire in, positive is leaning the tire out. If you throw a little bit of negative camber into the car, it will typically want to turn better and stick in the corner. The reason is, when the tires are perfectly straight up and down, and you turn the car this direction, and it leans, then both tires are going to lean out this way, and you're driving on the outside corner of the tire. I'm exaggerating, but this is basically what happens. You lose some traction, you're not on the bottom of the tread of the tire, you're on the corner. Just like this drawing, that's the only corner that's touching the ground is that corner right there and you can push through the corner when you have alignment issues like that if you put a little bit of negative into the system no more than a degree somewhere between zero and a degree at least when you turn in it flattens the tire and now you're perfectly flat on the bottom tread contact patch of the dirt and it will turn a lot better steve uh from super awesome rock and dad <laughs> how much does ride height have to do with camber Depending on the car, because geometry dictates the camber change throughout cycle. So Polaris's and Can-Am's and Wildcat's and even Speed UTV's, uh, when they exist, are all going to change that, that camber gain or camber cycle through suspension travel is going to be different. When you raise and lower the ride height, that is determining where that's going to go according to the geometry of the car. Most Polaris's and can am especially the new stuff, like say Turbo S's, XP Pros, um, X3's, are not going to have a camber gain designed into the geometry, so no matter where you put the car ride height wise, the tires aren't changing very much, uh, as long as everything's correct, you haven't wrecked the car and you don't have something bent. Um, but at 18 inches, if the, car, if, the zero, if the tires are zero camber, at 16 inches they should be zero too. Uh, or close, to answer your question. Anything else? M. Gulivo, is some camber good for driving instability? And earlier he asked, what will make his UTV drive like a Tesla? <laughs> 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 That's what he asked. I, uh, okay, so first question, I just covered it. If you throw a little bit of negative into the system, then it's going to turn a little bit better. Um, how it's going to drive like a Tesla, I don't know. Take the motor out of it and run on the battery and let me know how it goes. We'll have to get to Elon on that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You need a long extension cord for the Dune. Yes, <laughs> you yes, you do. Have somebody follow you, uh, I don't know, plugged in from above. Who knows? So, camber. Tire leaning in, tire leaning out. This is the most common alignment that we're running into people having questions because Typically, it's the only adjustment you have with a rear radius rod kit. And we will go and show you a radius rod kit on one of the cars that are over here and uh, show you how to adjust that. But that's important. It's actually very important because the car in the back, if the tires are, are leaned out with negative or positive camber, you enter a corner and it just slides off the outside corner. Also, you don't have very good traction when the tire isn't laying all the way down, uh, flat contact patch. And a little bit negative when you enter the corner is going to turn a little bit better. Yes, Steve. Justin, once you set your alignment, your toe, your cast, your camber, will it ever change? It can. <clears throat> alignments can always change. One of the reasons why alignment uh, alignments or adjustments and alignments are adjustable is because things change and wear out and you're going to want to keep up on it. Um, this kind of addresses live underscore free or die 2021's question. How often do you think alignment is needed? Um, I would play with the alignment when you visually see a problem. Um, once it's once it's set, it should remain that way until you've got thousands of miles on the car and possibly you've worn out a rod end or you've worn out well, control arm bushings. Usually alignments are an issue once you've bent something. Typically they're going to hold for quite a while. Uh, we get cars in um, that we're installing parts on and we can walk right by the back of it and see one of the tires bent in. Super common, either they've got a bent radius rod or the radius rods are all straight and we're wondering where it is. It's always in the trailing arm. If the radius rods are not, not completely bowed, but the tire is bowed in and it's a non-adjustable system, guaranteed that trailing arm coming from the front with a shock on it is bent right underneath the shock. It might be a very small and gradual bend, but it's enough to affect the alignment. And uh, we walk up to that car and go, hey man, you need a trailing arm, and they're wondering how we know that. Well, we've been through a lot of them and it's easy to, for us to see. 
but um, it's super common, to, especially like XPs and 900s. Um, those trailing arms bent real easy. X3 trailing arms bend pretty easy if you air them out and you can bottom the car out real real easily um, for whatever reason, maybe you put a ton of weight on it and didn't, didn't put a spring kit on it. Then uh, X3 trailing arms bend. There's gusset kits for them just for that reason. Matt? Uh, Jamie Hendrick wants to know, is it normal for a stock Wildcat XX front tire to lean in at the top? It is. All Wildcats have some negative camber to them because originally that double uh, X was designed by Robbie and he's definitely throwing negative camber in the trophy truck for a good reason. So they have some built into the front of that car. That's very, very normal. Um, some of the others that have not very, actually, that's about the only one that has negative camber built into it, except for the uh, KRX. KRX has negative camber built into that cycle, both front and rear. So when you see negative in a KRX, the thing's either raised up too high or it's sitting too low. Um, that's normal, it's in the geometry. It's also not adjustable with factory arms on most cars, so you're not gonna be able to change it. Unless you got something bent, you buy a new one and put it on. Anything? Brad Trulove, <clears throat> what's the weight difference between billet and chromoly radius rods? Um, ours? Let's, let's I don't know. Ours. I don't know, it's not, it's not much. I know that. Because the chromoly is hollow, the billet is solid, and when it comes to our radius rods, and there's about an e equal trade-off. What do you got, Steve? <laughs> Uh, Jared Cervantes wants to know, what's the best exhaust you suggest for his car? But he didn't tell me the car. Didn't tell him the car. Didn't well, tell me the car, so, so I can't answer that question. If it is an question. ambiguous, um, non-existent, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Speed UTV? I'm not going to say, say it. No. Uh, he's probably no. got a speed <laughs> UTV. <laughs> no, I'm not going to I did Robbie, I didn't say that. It wasn't me. It was me, Kay, Robbie. But if it's any car in existence, then the best exhausts I've seen have been from Evo. Everything that they make is super high quality, stainless, welded, amazing. There's actually one right behind you. Let's look at Josh's camera. It's completely side sidetracking oh, from hey, what Josh. we were talking about. But there is uh, the exhaust chase. Actually, what I meant for you to come over here and <laughs> look at goodness. is not the car, but the exhaust. So that's not that wasn't a, like a question we put out there. <laughs> no, I, I, but he said, "What should? What, what do you recommend?" I don't know. What do you have? So um, I would suggest the Evo stuff first. There's plenty of exhaust systems out there, but in, in my opinion, they're the one of the best built. That's for sure. They also make the most power from what I've seen because the Evo guys are on the dyno 100% of the time, probably more than anybody else I know. So back to alignments. Caster, that is going to be taking the spindle, the upright, and leaning it to the rear or to the forward, that's positive or, or negative caster. That's gonna make it drive straighter or wanna turn quicker. Camber, that is taking the tires and leaning them in at the top or out at the top. A zero to negative one degree, somewhere in that range, is the best place to be if you have adjustability. If you don't have adjustability, don't worry about it. Is that your Facebook? Toe, we haven't talked about that yet, but toe is looking straight down on top of the car. And yes, by the way, it is a car. I don't care what you guys say. So, is the difference, this pen is starting to go away. Tell us the difference between the measurement in the front of the tires and the measurement at the back of the tires. So, looking at me, from the front, if the tires are towed in, that means they're towed in, narrow at the front, wider at the back. Looking straight down on the car like that, that's toe in and toe out. Steve. You're about to get into toe, so someone does have a good question. Okay. Does adding our TLS kit change the toe? It should not change anything. The, all the geometry is identical, shouldn't change it. If you have a non-adjustable system like factory radius rods, bolt it on and you're good. But if you have adjustable system, I would always check it. Matt. Uh, Michael Boatman wants to know, do you guys do an alignment on cars after doing the right improvement in springs? No. Uh, we never align a car with right improvement in springs. The reason is all we do is change the ride height. And ride height should not change your alignment, it should not change the toe, should not change caster or camber, certainly isn't going to change anything in the back. It will remain the way that car came in here. Now, if the car came in here with the alignment off, it's going to leave here with the alignment off. Unless we see it, we're always going to bring it up and we're going to make a change or at least bring it up to the owner. Anything else? Okay, toe. A good rule of thumb on toe um, is everybody likes it one way. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one way or the other, oh, I about walked into that one. But Chase likes it both ways. He does. He does swing. And he's got major adjustment in his toe. <laughs> oh, he sure so, does. Um, toe depends on like what is the best toe to run. Depends on terrain. Uh, the more traction, like say running on asphalt, and if you are turning all the time, you might want a little bit of toe out. Matt? Uh, this guy's asked the question three times. Ryan Bartlett says, what should caster be set at for best steering with portals, and how can it be measured easily? The fact is that you have portals, you're never going to have good steering, and the caster does not matter, because you're screwed. I mean, a portal changes the geometry, and you're screwed. If, mm -hmm. if the portal is a four-inch portal or less, then I would run two to four degrees positive uh, caster. If you have more than a four inch portal, throw everything out the window, alignment doesn't matter. You can, th you can throw it against the wall and drive it. <laughs> it's, it's messed up either way. Matt. Uh, Juan Dominguez wants to know, when you install ZRP dog bones, does that change the alignment on the rear end of an X3? Uh, it should not because they line up with the factory holes, but that is assuming that the factory holes haven't been wallered out just a little bit so when you put the dog bone on there and straightens them out, it could change from where it was. 90% of the time, it's not going to affect it. You can put them on and you're okay. 10% uh, of the time, you should check it and then it might be off. Road 74 Glamis would just like to say, what's up to Steve? What's up, man? <clears throat> and then <laughs> Reno 6.7, shock therapy guys go both ways for sure with the smiley emoji. <laughs> <laughs> he's, and not, then, he's not wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to confirm nor deny. <laughs> I, I've seen it. And here's a good one, XR8 Ted 281. Will shock therapy ever come out with string bar setups for alignments? No, because we don't, we're not an alignment shop at all. I'm just kind of giving you some advice, but we certainly don't know what we're doing. We know enough to be dangerous and we know enough to make them fairly straight. So we always suggest in every one of our videos that you take it to a professional alignment shop because that is the way for us to not have liability. Notice <laughs> how he said way. fairly straight. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, we know enough to, to align a race car and have the thing go straight, okay? But we're not an alignment shop and we're not going to sell any parts for that. There's plenty of stuff out there. Go uh, to the websites like Speedway or any of the guys that are, short, that are uh, dirt track, sprint car websites. They got a ton of alignment kits you can buy and bolt right on that thing and get it pretty damn close. I would suggest that. Fact is though, most guys that just bolt radius rods on their car don't want to align their car. They want to bolt the radius rods on and go. And so if you can make this quick and they don't have to take it to a shop, then that's what most guys are gonna do. And that's kind of what we're going after. Anything else before I no. jump into the rest? No. All right, so toe, toe, set the toe. In my opinion, quarter of an inch towed in, that will be the best for almost all dirt, all sand, and even asphalt. If you're road racing and you're a NASCAR guy, why are you driving a UTV around a NASCAR course? Who cares about the alignment? I mean, well, no, that's not the case. You're going to care about it, but Make the it truth is left. that's like one guy ever out of thousands and thousands of guys that are even going to care about that. So dirt, uh, trail, <laughs> sand, quarter inch towed in. That's the same front and rear. On the rear. Um, last thing, square. This is uh, technical. You should take your car to uh, an alignment shop to find out if it's square or not. Basically, I'm, I'm talking about front tires, rear tires being uh, in square with themselves or square on the vehicle. So if you could pull a straight line down the center of the car and you can string line from the center of the hubs to the ground and you can pull from corner to corner, make sure that the thing is square. That's going to help it drive straight. It's going to help it drive really well and not wear out tires. Um, and you're getting a little complicated and that's why you take it to an alignment shop. Um, that's about that. What do you got, Steve? Anything else? <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> someone asked me if I'm single. <laughs> yeah. Mike Doves, is this turning into a dating show? It just might be, Mike. That's Chase's ex. Where, where, is, where is my beer and where is my tacos, Mike Doves? He did say he was going to get me some deodorant, too. So uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to walk over to the main shop and we're going to show you a little bit of uh, some tricks when it comes to rear radius rod adjustments on UTV so you can adjust your radius rods. But on the way over there, we've got a pretty badass car sitting in the shop over on the race side right now from Evo Power Sports and they are getting ready to run the, new, the Parker race which is coming up this weekend and taking a look at this car looking at the number plate I know that this is going to be in the which class? Rally. Rally. Funny that it's a U number but they call it Rally. Wouldn't it be an R mm. number if they actually had their never mind. You think they would have done unlimited as U? Yeah I don't, yeah probably. 
But since we got this car here, we actually have a special guest. We got Todd Zacone from Evo Power Sports. Hi, Todd. What's happening, guys? So if you guys have any questions for Evo, I know that usually gets pops off and everyone has horsepower questions that you know make everybody mad. Please throw them out because we got Todd to answer those questions right now. But Todd, tell us a little bit about this car. Um, I know, how about this? I'll, I'll lay the groundwork. Um, Rally class is best in the desert's version, best in the desert's version of uh, the stockest class you can run. It's factory. Uh, fuel cell. You can run the factory tank. You don't have to have a fuel cell. Correct. You can have opening doors as long as they pin shut. Correct. Uh, you've got to run a stock engine and tranny, but you can flash it, or is a little bit more you can do? Uh, it's open for um, for flashing. Yep. Uh, Correct. Can you do more to it? Can you pull the motor part? Um, I don't think that's the spirit of the class. Keep it as stock as possible. Correct. That's kind of what I thought yeah. too, but I didn't know if they actually had a, a line in the rules that said anything. Yeah. You've been doing your research on this, Justin. I memorize the rules. Yeah. Actually, I'm just lying about not knowing them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Justin, we do have a couple questions. One, Todd, you've been getting a lot of shout outs on the Shocker for Evo. And then uh, a couple people want to know, when are you going to come out with a 2021 Turbo RR tune? Ooh, that is the, the Huge question. question of the day every Ex day. Explain why. Um, so the new 21 RRs all come with a new uh, ECU. Um, the, the, the new ECU is basically today's version of automotive grade electronics. Uh, it's completely different than the previous generation uh, ECU. Uh, so uh, it's been a lot of work to get into that ECU. There's a lot of security features built in, and um, but we are, we're close. We're very close, so stay tuned on that. Uh, we'll be releasing some more information here shortly on that. So, uh, to translate, does that mean that you had to start over on Com the process? There was yes. nothing that translates from previous yeah, years. Yeah, absolutely nothing that translated. So, uh, everything is new from the ground up. Um, but we've we've been working on it. We've got uh, four 21 RRs that we own uh, that we've been using uh, for R&D. So, we are on it full time. How many hours you put on that new dyno? Does uh, it have an hour clicker on it? Uh, the, well, which new dyno? Oh, two. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we learned Stay something. tuned for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> All right. Sounds like that. Sounds like no matter what's going on, there's a lot of lot of belts flying uh, right now under testing. Yeah. Rusty Demon would just like to say EVP three fire emojis and a taco. Ooh. Sounds good. Sounds I'm like hungry. He, wa he wants to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd, we do have a couple more questions that are almost the same. If they buy an Evo exhaust, do they have to have a tune? No. That is not required. Um, it is not required. No. There Simple answer. All right. Simple Any other questions? Uh, so back to the car behind you, Chase. So this one's going to go in the rally class. It is the stockest class in Best in the Desert, which is bitchin', I think. Um, we're going to be actually running that class this uh, race as well. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa. I know. What did, you, what did I, know. You know, I was going to say, I know uh, you've been doing some research, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> so, the truth be told, the race car is not done. And so, done, we will not, done, we will not be racing in the, in the Pro Turbo class this race. Uh, but, uh, Justin, race cars are never done. <laughs> uh, it's true. This is true. So, it wasn't done enough okay. to, answer, uh, to enter this race, and we, we're not going to show up without a ton of testing. So uh, we decided to go out and have some fun because we're going there anyway. And we're bringing the pre-runner and just entered it in the stock class. So uh, when you come up on us, in our, yeah. and, and then just be nice, honk, and I'll get out of the way in the rocket ship that you're going to enter here, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing. Well, so, <clears throat> Todd, yeah. people want to know how much horsepower does this thing have? Mm. Um, about 900. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Which would last about three miles in off-road racing. Yes, exactly. No, so this, is a, a, is this is a relatively stock. It's a pump gas, off-the-shelf, 91 octane. Uh, this is a 2020 RR, so um, makes about 215 horsepower. Reliable all Absolutely day, reliable, day. yep. Pump gas, reliable. Same, same. There's nothing special. It's just our off-the-shelf tune. And that keeps belts on the car, and um, yep. you're not you're not having to deal with a whole bunch of other issues. It's just basic, correct? Um, basic, reliable, and that's what off-road needs. Yeah. 
Um, anything else you can tell us about the car? Or um, well, the car looked nothing like this a few weeks ago, so this mm -hmm. has been a lot of a um, lot of long hours. Um, I see uh, arms, obviously shock stuff. Yeah. Uh, horsepower. Well, yep. Yeah, it's um, S3 arms. S3 Dustin all the way around. Yep. yep. Dustin and the crew over there. Um, that's we wanted just something that was strong and reliable. Um, so and seats and belts. Seats and belts. Obviously GPS. You know where you're going. Correct. And clean air system. I can see from here. Yep. Uh, intercoms, radios. Yep. Steve, what do you got? Todd, I have one final question. Chase is absolutely going to love this question. When are you ever going to do anything for the YXZ? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. Todd, and I want to know what's your best tune out for this year's 2021 YXZ? Sorry. What do you got coming off the we, 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 we dropped that project uh, five years ago. <coughs> Come on, yes. Todd. Not that I don't have love for the YXZ, but at the time... You can't pit fix perfection. That car just stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think five years ago is when that car dropped. So you dropped the project the second it came out? <laughs> yeah. Well, because that project dropped the same time the Polaris Razor came out. The Razor Turbo came out. Okay. So we had to make a choice because we couldn't, uh, we couldn't take on both projects. So we chose the Polaris over the Yamaha. So your decision was whether to do a tune for 10 customers or 10,000 customers? Correct. Oh, I see. Yeah. It was Weird chase. Hey, yeah. look. Sorry, Chase. Business. There's a baker's dozen worth of us out there. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, badass car, Todd. Thank you very much for showing yeah. that off. It just so happened to be in here, and this wasn't planned. Um, you guys get a, get a real good look at what it takes to go even run the stock class. If you, uh, if you don't do some of the basics that are on this car, then you're going to have a broken car pretty quick. Correct. But and we're well, excited for this, uh, this new shock yeah. setup. Well, um, should work out pretty well. We have a little bit of time on this one. We won't get time to really go testing specifically with you in this car, but I think for this Parker race, race it's going to be very, very close. Plus, with IQS, you can turn it up and down. If we missed it a little bit, you can make it a little softer. That's why we're looking forward to it, for yeah. sure. Um, well, follow us over here, Todd. Let's go find some car that we can finish up an alignment on, which is the reason why we even did this thing today. We got all sidetracked, which is normal and fun. I like that anyway. Sidetracked is great. That's why Steve's here. Yeah. Oh, is it the Honda that we're looking at doing some alignment to? I don't is believe it? so. I believe is it, oh, it is, is Sabino's, Sabino's DS. <clears throat> you know what? This actually does have some uh, some loose radius rods on it. Mm -hmm. So, yes, this side? All right, very good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mess this one up a little bit. And mess with the toe. It's a little tight. So all I did right there is just make it purposely a problem so that you guys can see what we're going to want to look at. If you end up putting a set of radius rods on your vehicle and you want to align it, maybe come back a little bit more, Chase, and then take a knee. What I'm looking for, what I want you guys to look at, is kind of put your eyeball on this, looking at this tire's angle compared to the front tire. So maybe push your head out a little bit wider so you can see when that tire, and you can actually see this front tire in front of it. The easiest way to cheat or to shortcut an alignment is to step back behind the car and put your head in line with that outside edge of that tire, compare it to the front one. Believe it or not, your eyeball is very, very accurate. And as you start adjusting camber, and if you're trying to adjust the rears to match the front, Eyeballs around here are with about two or three tenths of a degree. You can see if it's off a little bit, and that's about as much as you're going to be able to adjust, even at alignment shop. So once you've put a set of radius rods on the back of that car, and you look at this one where it's negative cambered, hopefully you guys can tell when, by looking through that camera, it might not translate, that the inside of this is, the top of this tire is inboard. That would be negative camber. And then what we want you to do is adjust that out until this angle matches the front. Can you actually see that, Chase? Yeah, we can. It's kind of different with each camera. That's why I'm going back and forth. So well, we got up it. close might be a bitch. Farther back might be a little easier. But we want you to be able to see that front tire. We got it. So adjust the upper. Steve, you tell me when. Keep going. I'm just pushing that out. Keep going right about there. Right there? Yep, that looks about good. So that's a really quick way to get your camber in line. Now, you can also download a couple of apps. And I'll show you really quick if I can find it on my phone. 
<laughs> now, uh, now he's going to show blah. how bad I am at Here's this. one. Here's a Carpenter app that basically has a level on it. And you can throw your phone on the center cap of any of these things. Or if you had a nice straight edge, which would be even better, you can throw it on the straight edge and see where you're at. Oh, that was close. What? One degree. That's pretty good. And that's kind of what we're shooting for between zero and one degree. Let's see what the front one actually looks like and that's see like how close it. we are. <laughs> Eight tenths. Steve, your eyeball is within two tenths. Ooh, he's a monster. It's like I do this all the time. <laughs> That's because you do. It's like I do it for a living. Yeah, <laughs> but it's actually that easy. If you guys just follow that process of taking the rear tire, matching it to the front visually, you're going to be very close. Once you've got camber adjusted, then when you're talking about an X3, you're also going to want to adjust toe. This center link right here is strictly an adjustment for toe. And as we talked about earlier, that's setting the tires inboard or outboard. You want to adjust the rear to have about the same toe in as the front, which is a quarter of an inch, roughly on a 30 to 33 inch tire. Steve. Can you tell everybody what that app is again, Justin? There's been four or five people that have asked. I don't even know. It's a carpet or something. It's a handy level. Handy. <laughs> Chase yeah. likes a good handy too. Yeah, Chase loves a handy. Um, but uh, does have some other uh, capabilities other than what Chase would approve, would approve on. These guys are so loud working like this. Weird. Savino's, uh, Savino's radius rods got me. Oh well. So, on an X3 you can adjust the toe. Again, doing the same thing, you're gonna adjust this radius rod in or out. It's gonna change the toe a little bit. There's a couple things in our instructions that'll help you with X3 specific toe ch setting because you wanna make sure that one side is not uh, crab walking, I guess is the right, right way to put it. Crabbing is, if the front tires are straight, rear tires are straight, and you adjust the tires like this, then the car is going to drive crooked, and that's crabbing. So you can change that or uh, adjust that by, thank you, by checking the tire from left to right by, uh, we basically take a tape measure from the same spot on the arm, like say this hardware right here, bounce this off here and check toe. Same with the other side. <laughs> that's why I don't like doing alignment. <laughs> We would check toe with a straight edge on this side and make sure it matched the other side first. And then we would adjust both tires equally at the same time and try and bring that toe in, in the front slightly. Um, that's the easy way to get through all this, especially in this shop when we see enough cars, there are enough, uh, as many cars as we see per day. And usually when they leave here, they drive straight. Uh, we also tell everybody to take it to an alignment shop so that that uh, takes liability off our shoulders and now it's on yours. We like that. The more of that, the better. Right, Steve? Agreed. M. Um, Gulivo is really impressed with that app. Good old handy, he would like to call it. That's right. It oh. works. It has a lot, lot, of, lot of capabilities. Just remember your phone cases are not quite straight. <laughs> so you go put that thing on there with a crooked phone case like, I don't know, Chase's phone case, case and it kicks it over. Keep that in mind. Yes. Hey, man, pop sockets, they got to be on there. Justin, yes. Steve-O714 has asked this question a few times, so I'm going to ask it finally. He has an OG Maverick Turbo Max, and when I move the steering wheel side to side quick, it clunks. What could that be, Justin? Um, the tie rods could be worn out. The rack and pinion could have some play in the rack gear. Um, usually anything steering related, uh, when you kick it back and forth, it might be in the steering column. There's a couple of universal joints in that column. Make sure those universal joints aren't clunking. Uh, that's a bad, bad issue if it's a universal joint in any of the steering columns because it could fail and you'd have no steering whatsoever. Um, you get down to the rack, if the rack's got play, then they can fail. If it's in the tie rods, they're just going to get worse. So start at the steering wheel and work your way down. Have somebody moving the wheel while you've got your hand on all the parts and that'll narrow it down pretty quick. Hey, Todd, yes. you guys got any tunes for OG Mavericks? Anything that old? Uh, we do, because that's really? where we started with the Can-Ams, was the OG Maverick. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for all the normally aspirated OG Mavericks and the Maverick Turbos, yes, we do. Awesome. Um, were you guys doing a bunch of racing stuff with like when Lone Star and uh, Corey were racing the OG stuff? The first OG Maverick we team we worked with was uh, S3. That's kind of how our relationship mm -hmm. started with S3, was mm -hmm. with their OG Mav. Uh, when they um, That car was at my shop here in Phoenix before they went out and raced the Mint and won. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Nate Birch for Evo. 
Everyone wants to know about quiet exhaust, especially since noise seems to be a problem with uh, people accepting the sport these days. Any quiet exhaust coming from you guys? So most of our exhaust systems we design to be quiet. Um, our, our, we do have a, a race line series of exhausts, but like our, our magna muffler for the uh, X3 is designed to be not much louder than stock, just a little bit deeper of a tone. Um, so when we, our approach to building exhaust systems is uh, we want to keep them as quiet as possible for a performance exhaust system. Awesome. Uh, Marcos, Valerie, what do you think of the Evo oil catch can? Give us the lowdown on that for the X3. So um, I, I I put one on the race car. Uh, the reason why we've got the oil catch can is because um, the cleaner the air going into the engine, um, the better the combustion. So uh, the oil catch can uh, takes the crankcase vent and vents it into an external can um, to keep the air going into the engine cleaner. So yeah, I do recommend it. What radius rods did you have on that car? Your uh, shock therapy. Shock therapy ones. Justin, are the ZRP radius rods adjustable? Everyone keeps wanting to know. Um, their billet um, high clearance radius rods are not on the bottom. Uh, they are on the top and on the toe. So they're as adjustable as you need them to be. How's that? <laughs> hey, Todd, do you still have a shop in Phoenix? If not, where are you located? Uh, we do all of our manufacturing in Phoenix, so we have a. That's where um, all of our manufacturing is done in Phoenix for all of our exhaust systems. Um, we do not have a uh, our own physical presence, our own physical shop here, but maybe something here in the future. Mm. Might be part of that dual dyno thing. You're oh. We can have shootouts on the same in the same shop, two <laughs> dynos, same right? time. That'd be awesome, actually. Uh, what else you guys got? Nothing much, man. Hey, then, uh, Todd, you got anything you want to promote that's coming out soon? Maybe uh, secrets? Um, no, anything but new? this race car is going to be something pretty cool where it's going. So stay tuned for um, some more information on that here. Do you mean besides the race or at the race? Well, maybe at the race, too. Something cool at the race? Yes, something cool at the race. So I'm pretending not to know, but I actually know. So I'm yeah. actually just poking you about what <laughs> <laughs> no, we got some cool things coming uh, oh. for this Parker race. Yes, we've got a lot of uh, new stuff we've been working on. Um, and uh, yeah, you have to stay tuned. I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give everybody a hint. It's going to involve uh -oh. a lot of cameras. Would that be a good hint? Yeah, that's a good hint. I didn't get anybody mad to saying that today. Nope, we're good. You know, lots and lots and lots and lots of cameras. You know, that's like the big expensive ones. Whoa, whoa, Nothing whoa. Nothing that Chase owns. We cannot leave Todd without asking this question from the one and only Mr. Sparkles. Do you want to take this one, Steve? I don't it just came see. in. It's out oh, the oven. Does, <laughs> <laughs> does Evo have a tune for the, the 20? Speed UTV? Oh. <laughs> 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 That'd be a negative. <laughs> well, I think according to no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna go there. Never. Okay, a question for both of you. Uh, what do you guys think about lithium batteries? People have been asking about lithium batteries on this post. I have zero problem. I think they're great. Um, I think they're great, but they're not so great when they're not internally regulated and someone puts a conventional battery charger on them. Uh, true. You're gonna. You're going to blow some stuff up. So I, I guess I should have qualified what I've said. Find the proper battery that has internal regulation or a computer board chip on it. Super important. You're going to have to spend more money than... You're not going to spend 200 bucks on a lithium and have it be good. You're going to have to spend five, six, seven hundred dollars Hillbilly Hyde, will Evo have a big turbo or intercooler for the XPs? The XP... So the, the turbo pros. kit. Yep. Uh, the Pro XP... Well, the factory turbocharger on the Pro XP is... Uh, good for about 215 wheel horsepower. So we haven't gone much more than that right now, but we do have plans for a bigger turbocharger on that vehicle. Mm, see, that's a good one. You just let, let out of the bag, stuff coming down the pike. What else are you yeah. testing on the dyno besides the Pro? Uh, um, and all the big horsepower X3 stuff. Billet engine blocks Ooh, big, for big, the big, X3. Power. That's what oh. we've been working on. Um, and we've got a couple test engines uh, in cars right now. Mm -hmm. Now I know why that question came up. I was trying to figure out what he was talking about. What was that? Someone said, like, when the billet blocks come, and I was like... Uh, yeah, right now they're, they're being tested. Um, yes, they're being tested. So if your la last big horsepower car was making, I don't know, 900 or 1,000 horsepower, does that make this one makes 2,000? No, 
Oh. Absolutely not. I thought I would get, <laughs> I I would get some real numbers out of you. Nine, six, no. six seven, eight. Nine, ten. What? Oh, I thought you were counting, no? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you said, he, so he's making 910 horsepower, everybody. No, no. Just so you know. Todd, are you guys going to make head studs? We already do, do make head studs. you guys already make head studs? There's yes. people asking about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've got... Uh, like five different or four different variations of head studs depending on what the customer is willing to do and what their ultimate horsepower goals are. Todd, you got a lot of new Can-Ams. You could answer Smooth D's question here. Smart shocks or no smart shocks on a 2021 Can-Am and why? Well, I actually, this weekend out in the dunes was my first weekend driving a smart shocks in the wild. And I liked it. I really did. It was a, it was a, Comfortable ride. Um, I actually liked it in comfort mode. So I drove the dunes in comfort mode a couple times. Um, when we were doing some high speed stuff, I had us click it over to Sport Plus um, because it, it felt like the car was floating too much. Um, but I do like the, the Smart Shock setup. So would you spend the money? I guess is what he's asking. I think it's another $3,500 option. Um, I think I would spend the money. Um, but I'm also waiting for to see what you guys come out with to make the smart shocks better. I appreciate that, but I would probably spend the money. Yeah. I think it's worth it. Yeah, um, <laughs> for sure. And then mess with it after that. So you're just starting with a with something that works better, and then you play with it and make that even better. I agree. So that would. But be I was impressed. Yep. Cool. XRA Ted yeah. 281. Thanks Evo and Shock Therapy for the info. Back to my Elon meeting. And Chase, I have a package I'm sending your way. I bet he's sending you a big package. Ooh, I, hope, <laughs> I hope it comes quick. Probably battery powered. You will. <laughs> I guess. For sure. I we got, got a that. couple questions probably because he's standing in front of the KRX. Mm. They're wondering uh, Evo tunes for the KRX. So the KRX, um, we have not uh, done anything with the KRX as of yet, except for we build an exhaust system for it. Um, but we do have plans for this platform. We're just hoping that Kawasaki brings something motor, different motor-wise to the table. Meaning like a factory turbo pack? Factory, factory turbo or, supercharger. or factory supercharger, exactly. Um, when do you think they're going to release the new model for the year? I don't know. I, I, July, is that you typically? Typically. Um, you know what? We have a sales and marketing manager for Kawasaki coming on the show in uh, a little while. Let me narrow down the date and let's uh, really beat him up about it. I I'll have you back should. so you can absolutely. I'll come down for that. Destroy him with questions about uh, horsepower that he can't answer. Yeah, it is, it's a great car. I mean, it's it's built it's built for something different, in my opinion. Meaning a that lot it's more a power. Yes, uh, yes, a lot more power because it's a pretty stout vehicle from the factory in terms of chassis and whatnot, um, and it is so heavy to where it really does need more power. Yeah, um, I would agree because that's really my only complaint about it. Yeah. You know, there isn't anything else about it. I think it does bad. It just needs to do a whole lot of it faster. Yeah, and in the in the desert uh, desert riding, I'm sure it's fine, but it, it's definitely not, would not be the most fun dune vehicle. Because no power and weight. Correct. Right. What do you got? Reno 6.7 KRX is a tractor. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's heavy and slow. I mean, tractors run forever though. This is true. She thinks my tractor's sexy. And all tractors right. do some work. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Sounds like we're about out of here. That's it. Todd, anything else you want to blow out of the water with uh, new mm -hmm. announcements? No, I'm good. Okay, cool. I'm not going to talk to you guys about any of our new announce announcements because I got twice a week I can tell you about it. We'll do that later. Uh, Steve. Yes. Send us the heck out of here. All righty, guys. If you're looking to buy anything, visit our website at www.shocktherapist.com. Or, if you have any questions, call into the shop at 623-217-4959.